Instant coffee has come a long way since it was first introduced in 1890, becoming the go-to fuel for everything from morning commutes to late-night study sessions. At the forefront of this caffeinated revolution is none other than Nestle's Nescafe, brewing up an incredible 1 billion cups every single day. And it all kicks off with the dedication of over 100,000 farmers in coffee-growing powerhouses like Brazil and Vietnam, supplying more than 13 million bags of beans to Nestle's 24 cutting-edge factories across the globe. Turning these coffee cherries into your daily brew is no small feat, but as you're about to see, it's a process that's worth every sip. Nestle sources its premium coffee beans from the world's top coffee growing regions, including farms in Brazil and Vietnam, known for their exceptional quality. The coffee plants first bloom as delicate, fragrant white flowers in a fleeting phase that lasts just a few days. Over the next six to nine months, these flowers will mature into vibrant red cherries, signaling that the beans inside are ready. Farmers keep a keen eye on the plants, knowing the timing has to be just right. When about 95% of the cherries are red and only a few greenish ones remain on the plant, it's time to harvest. While hand-picking coffee cherries is still a tradition on some farms, it's a slow and costly process, not exactly ideal for large-scale operations. So larger farms like this one use this specialized harvesting machine. It's fast, efficient, and gets the job done without even breaking a sweat. As the machine passes over the coffee plant, 1,500 vibrating rods on rotating cylinders gently shake the branches as they pass through. Each of the rods vibrates up to 1,000 times per minute. These vibrations cause the ripe cherries to fall into fish plates below. With just two to three seconds spent on each tree, this harvesting machine allow farmers to collect up to 60 bags of cherries in about five hours, making quick work of what used to take days by hand. Once the ripe cherries have been harvested, the machine uses slat conveyor belts to transfer them into hoppers. These hoppers act as storage while tractors carry the cherries to the wet mill. Just 8 to 12 hours after harvest, the coffee cherries begin their transformation at the wet mill. First, they're funneled into a massive hopper, which guides them to this gravity separator, a water tank that separates the ripe from the not-so-ready. Ripe cherries, heavier and full of flavor, sink to the bottom, while the unripe ones float to the top, ready to be discarded or used elsewhere. From there, they tumble over rotating drums lined with a rough surface. These drums gently press the cherries against fixed plates, skillfully separating the juicy pulp from the precious coffee beans inside. While the skinned cherries move on to the next stage, the discarded skins don't go to waste. They're sent off to be used elsewhere on the farm, often used as nutrient-rich compost. After depulping, the coffee beans are left with a slimy coating called mucilage. To remove it, they're transferred into these fermentation tanks, often lined with ceramic tiles, where clean mountain water works its magic. Over the next 12 to 24 hours, the water will break down the mucilage naturally. This step is all about balance, though. Farmers carefully monitor this process to ensure the beans don't over-ferment, as even a small misstep could affect their flavor. Once the fermentation softens the mucilage, the beans are ready for washing. This step begins with a simple yet precise inspection. A farmer checks the beans by hand, feeling the surface to ensure the mucilage has softened enough. Once satisfied, more fresh water is added to the fermentation tank, fully submerging the beans again. Then, armed with a long wooden tool, the farmer stirs the beans vigorously to scrub away the sticky residue. This step is important to achieving the clean parchment layer that protects the bean underneath. As the water fills with loosened mucilage, it turns murky, a clear sign that the process is working. 
Farmers often repeat this step, draining out the dirty water and refilling the tank until the beans are spotless. Now thoroughly washed, the coffee beans take a sun bath to dry. They're spread evenly across these flat surfaces, often on parchment or specially prepared drying beds. Sometimes, they're shaded to shield them from unpredictable weather. Throughout the day, farmers use rakes to turn the beans, ensuring they all dry evenly. The drying process takes about a week or two, depending on the weather, with the goal of reaching an ideal moisture level of about 11%. When the parchment coffee has dried to just the right amount, it continues into this hulling machine. This is where the tough parchment layer is gently stripped away, finally revealing the vibrant green coffee beans hidden inside. After hulling, the beans now called green coffee beans are carefully prepared for storage. Once cleaned and sorted for quality, the beans are packed into 60 kilogram jute or sisal bags each labeled with origin and grade details for full traceability. These bags are then stored in ventilated warehouses to keep them fresh and protected from pests and moisture until they're ready to begin their journey to the Nescafe factory. Once the bags of green coffee beans reach the Nestle factory, they are removed from the trailers using a robotic arm. This specialized arm equipped with a spider gripper effortlessly lifts the large bags before depositing them onto an extendable conveyor belt. The use of this robotic system prevents employees from suffering any potential back injuries that have come from lifting the heavy bags. As the bags travel along the conveyor, additional robotic arms on the machine push each bag into the correct position. From there, the bags of green coffee pass over this moisture sensor that check their humidity. If a bag doesn't have the ideal humidity level, it's rejected and automatically separated from the rest. The ones that do pass continue along the conveyor belt. During their journey, a robotic probe randomly takes a sample of coffee beans from a bag as it passes. Next, these robotic arms automatically stacks the accepted bags onto a pallet. The pallets pass over a scale to ensure they all have a consistent weight. After the bags of green coffee beans are placed on the pallets, it's time to take them over to the roasting plant. But before that, the bags are first opened so the beans can be deposited into this sifting machine. This sifter has vibrating floors that shake up the beans, and doing so shakes off any leftover debris. At the same time, the sifting process can shake out any small or broken coffee beans. It's a quick quality check to make sure only the best beans are ready to roast. Before the coffee beans meet the roaster, though, they must pass the ultimate test. Human tasters armed with finely tuned taste buds sample up to 100 brewed cups of coffee a day to ensure the batch meets exacting standards. These experts can detect even the slightest flavor variations because in the world of coffee, one bad bean can ruin an entire cup. It's a job that requires precision, patience, and a deep love for coffee. Once the beans pass their rigorous taste tests, they move on to roasting. This is where they develop their signature aroma and flavor. The beans are fed into this industrial, double-walled rotating drum heated to temperatures between 370 and 540 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside, paddles keep the beans in constant motion, ensuring they roast evenly without scorching. Depending on the desired flavor profile, the roasting time lasts anywhere from 8 to 20 minutes. Fun fact, the roast time has a big impact on the caffeine level. Lighter roasts, which spend less time in the drum, hold on to more caffeine. In contrast, darker roasts, which are roasted longer, end up with less caffeine but deliver bolder flavors. After roasting, the beans are poured into this large cooling tray, where a powerful fan blows air from underneath, while sifting arms swirl the beans around. They stay here for about 5 to 10 minutes to stop the roasting process and lock in their flavor. Once the coffee beans have cooled, they are automatically deposited into this industrial-sized coffee mill that turns them into a coarse powder. 
This powder is then brewed into a strong liquid coffee extract using steam and pressure. From here, the liquid extract follows one of two drying methods. It's spray-dried to create Nescafe Originals classic granules or freeze-dried to achieve the premium texture and flavor of Nescafe Gold. In the spray drying method, the liquid coffee extract enters this massive spray dryer. Inside, the extract is atomized through a high-pressure spray nozzle, turning it into a fine mist of coffee droplets. At the same time, scorching hot air blasting in at 1000 degrees Fahrenheit and traveling at 400 miles per hour instantly evaporates the moisture from the droplets. What's left are tiny solid coffee particles that settle at the bottom forming a fine powder we know as instant coffee, ready to be dissolved in your cup. For Nescafe Gold, the process takes a more sophisticated turn with freeze-drying, a method that locks in the coffee's full flavor and aroma. To begin the process, rich coffee extract from the previous step is heated until it condenses into a thick liquid concentrate resembling toffee. From here, the condensed extract is transported by conveyor belt towards its next destination. The still-hot condensed extract is taken inside this 30-meter freezing hall, where it's then cooled to a bone-chilling minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, effectively locking in all the rich aromas. At the end of the 30-meter freezing hall, it resembles a long sheet of coffee ice. This ice sheet is then sent into a large machine lined with rotating blades. The blades break the frozen coffee extract into tiny coffee granules. Next, the frozen coffee granules go through a final step known as sublimation. During this step, the frozen coffee granules are deposited onto large sheets that resemble cooking trays before being taken into a low-pressure tube. While in this tube, the frozen granules are heated to a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 hours. This precise temperature and low-pressure environment allows any remaining frozen moisture in the granules to transform directly into vapor, skipping the liquid phase entirely. Then, an internal vacuum whisks the vapor away, preserving the coffee's rich flavor while leaving behind perfectly dry granules. Once freeze-dried, the coffee granules are perfectly stable at room temperature, ready to be packaged and eventually brewed into your next delicious cup of coffee. At this point, the dried coffee granules are sent to the packaging area. The granules get deposited into large storage sacks and sent to a conveyor belt to fill the jars. As the jars whiz along the track, they are each filled in less than a second. Some Nescafe factories can fill as many as 320 jars a minute or more, or 250,000 jars daily. As soon as the jar is filled, it's sealed airtight to lock in freshness guaranteeing every scoop of Nescafe is as flavorful as the day it was made. Just after they are sealed, a cap is applied over the seal. The jar then continues its journey, and a label is applied to it. At this point, the coffee jars are ready to be shipped to stores, bringing that instant coffee magic closer to your cup. As you can see, the process of turning raw coffee cherries into instant coffee enjoyed by millions is a complicated one. However, Every step plays a crucial role in making sure that when your cup is poured, it's nothing short of coffee perfection. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to Made Vision for more fascinating content. We'll see you next time.